Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. It's from a guy who shares his story about events that happened about 15 years ago, give or take, when he was in his 50s, when he got a gig working at Yosemite National Park. And the first year there was great. He got to enjoy the scenery, the job, the people. He had a great time. And then they hired Cassie, a gal who did a terrible job and made uh, everybody's lives very difficult, and yet for some reason, the company would never fire her. And why didn't they fire her? Well, number one, they lived in California, and number two, she was a gal, and obviously, they don't want to do that because of the drama and turmoil. And he had to deal with her and the drama she brought to the workplace, and doing a bad job and having to clean up after her, and just all this drama and turmoil, all because they wouldn't fire her. And you're gonna see eventually it doesn't go well for him in the short term. However, Eventually, they, the company does come to its senses and she gets kicked out. And that'd be a good one to go over here, guys, to show you the unfortunate reality of how, as a guy, you could be in the workplace, you could be doing your job, doing great, good, good work environment, and all of a sudden they hire the wrong girl. But honestly, it could be any person, but let's be honest, a certain gender can get away way more than the guys, and they'll still keep them on, and the turmoil it can bring. And this backs up why so many guys they prefer to work with men. They don't want to be alone with the gals. You get the point, you know, and because how it can turn things around and make their lives a living hell. And you're going to have parts here you're going to scream because maybe you'll be able to relate to some of this. And it goes to show you that it really backs up a lot of things I talk about. But anyhow, don't worry. Justice eventually is served and this guy's doing well now. But definitely quick story here to make the point that I cover quite often. He says, Dear SSM, I brought in this to help clear my mind and get some bad memories off my chest. A few years back, while living in Los Angeles, I found myself in a situation of near homelessness. But thanks to some good friends and some lost funds that have been mismanaged due to the 2008 financial crisis being located, I found myself in a small town near Yosemite National Park. Flat broke, but with some hustle, managed to land a halfway decent housekeeping job in the Wawona area of the park, and with some frugal living, started building up some savings. Well, good for you, man. Hardships fall on us all, but you didn't quit. You didn't give up. You didn't succumb to drugs and alcohol. You found a way, hard work, and there you go. And, of course, friends and family helping you out. Good. That's what I want to hear. <clears throat> if you've never been to Yosemite, I strongly recommend that you go. It's one of the most beautiful areas on the planet, despite the insane crowds that show up in the summertime. Well, I've been there, man. I was there in July 2011, and yes, there were crowds, and it was it was uh, it was spectacular. I was there for I think two or three nights, and I was amazed when I was driving up the mountain, what one part one part of the area in the, the higher area, there was snow. I was up there was a pine trees, and it was very sh a lot of shade, and there was, all, there was snow there. I pulled over a guy out of the car, I was making snowballs and throwing them at my girl, the girlfriend I had at the time, and had a lot of fun. But still, my favorites, I've seen a lot of national parks. Still, my favorite would probably be Grand Teton. Grand Teton, 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 whatever you want to call it. Badlands. Badlands were badass in South Dakota. And, of course, the Grand Canyon. I'm going to be going there again next fall of 2024. So, I'm looking forward to that. But, anyhow, Yosemite's awesome. <clears throat> in the two years I worked there, it was only the second half that was bad. The work was hard, cleaning 130 houses slash cabins, and overtime during peak season was normal. But the fact that I got to work in Yosemite and had free access to the park was a definite perk because I'm, I'm a history nut and love to explore historical locations. That had to be an, a cool gig for a couple of years, the beauty there. I generally got along with almost everyone in the company, which I had a decent amount of benefits for employees, and would often hold company picnics and fun cooking competitions. Uh, everything was great until Cassie was hired. Yes, that's her name, and I don't give a flip if you say it since anyone in the area should avoid her like chlamydia. <laughs> so be it. She exemplified all the worst traits of female behavior that you often talk about, and I soon found my life to be absolute hell thanks to her bratty attitude. She can be best described as an adult child. In the looks department, she was at best a five with a pear-shaped body and had the mentality and attitude to go along with it in the true nature of a tra of a trailer trash B-word, since that's a t they, are t they are quite common in that part of uh, California. Yeah, I'm not surprised. 
Her attitude was always bitchy. She always complained. And typically cabins that she cleaned would always have mistakes that required someone else to rectify when the supervisor would make an, expe- an inspection. After you clean since the company charged somewhat high prices for the luxury of having a real house to live in while you enjoy the splendor of Yosemite. So they hired a woman. She was a pain in the ass. Did a half-ass job. And then everybody had to go back and clean up after her. And of course... The supervisor, manager would turn a blind eye, probably for reasons we can all imagine. The real problem started when she made the brilliant decision to start hitting on a good friend of mine in the maintenance grounds department who I will call Paul. Because the, because the trip into work was very long, the company provided us with a van. We would all meet early in the morning at a Walgreens in Oakhurst and van pool 40 minutes to work. Since the commute is mostly through the Sierra Nevada forest, it's not bad in comparison with the insane commutes in Los Angeles. Shit, yeah, I'd take 40 minutes just looking at the amazing scenery and just really taking it all in versus fucking seeing Denny's there and McDonald's there and and whatever on the L.A. freeways. Uh, Paul, who was a tall, ruggedly handsome guy who typically would make all the ladies go gaga, was married with a few kids. Since the senior supervisor of the housekeeping department was his mom, a tough but cool lady who'd been there for a long time, most women avoided getting on her bad side. But not Cassie. When Paul would drive the van, Cassie would be sitting next to him and would have to en- we'd have to endure the whole trip of watching her shamelessly flirt m- most of the trip. It was getting so bad that she would accidentally drop her hairbands in his lap and then reach to his lap to retrieve them. Yeah, guys, by the way note here when women do stuff like that it's on purpose this is why they know what they're doing so for instance when a woman's touching you and stuff like that to brush something off your shoulder or your leg or they know what they're doing make that make that clear here in contrast when i drove she would sit sullenly focused on her phone the whole trip partly due to the fact i played classic opera on the van cd player until she while she frantically while she was frantically into bro county music. It wasn't uncommon for her to throw a, uh, a conniption fit and start screaming about my ugly music. <laughs> I'd play opera too or anything to piss her off. If you like listening to opera, my man, while you're driving through the forest, knock yourself out. It's what you're into. At some point, I got fed up with her house, house-wrecking house antics in the van and went to the director to warn him of the consequences of her stupidity since we were sure-handed and losing Paul would have been catastrophically bad for the company. So she does a shitty job making you all have to clean up her work, work harder. She's flirting with and carrying on with the son of the uh, supervisor owner, whatever, who's married. She's causing problems wherever she goes. They should have fired her when she was doing a bad job, but they probably were fearful of doing that, living the, given the fact that you're in California and probably for firing a woman. Now you get the point. This is the point I'm making about the unfortunate crap that gals can get away with in the workplace. Later on, I felt the effect of when Kathy started behaving like a bratty six-year-old. I was a team leader at this point since I had been head seniority with a slight bump in pay, which meant you were in charge of two or three others, depending on, on how big the houses we were cleaning were. Instead of getting down by stri- stripping the cabins and cleaning, she would go into baby mode, refusing to do anything, slamming doors, and eventually getting into a screaming match with me. You should never let it come to that, but man, don't fight with women. They're going to scream and cry and throw tantrums and throw shit and everything like that. You're not going to win. As hard as it is, remain calm and cool. As a leader trying to rise in the ranks of this business here, you got to be calm and cool, even though you want to scream and yell at her. These are all grounds to have her terminated. She was claiming she, claiming she was totally innocent and I was and I was just a woman-hating tyrant. It got so bad that I told her to get the fuck out and walk back to the main building, forcing the two of us to clean up. Well, she pulled some shenanigans and I found myself out of the team leader position, which meant a cut in pay and instead being put under her a few times when she was made the team leader. There you go. She's a terrible employee, starts drama, all that, and now you're demoted and you have to listen to her. How do you think it's going to go with regards to how operations is run under her? And why do you think it probably happened? We all know. True to form, the slamming doors and sullen girly attitude and snide comments continued, especially if she had one of her trailer trash friends along so they could gossip instead of working. 
As I mentioned, after we cleaned, we'd have to call the supervisor who'd come and inspect. So as Cassie typically cut corners, being a sloppy person in general, her work would have to be redone, wasting time when we normally couldn't afford to. Things continued in the, su in the manner until I learned that my parents back in Maine, who were in their 90s, were experiencing health issues, and my sisters were badly in need of help. I submitted my two-week notice, found a U-Haul trailer, and got the hell out of there, just in time to assist my parents before my father passed away a few months later. Well, you're a good son to go help your family. But you know what? Even though you love the scenery and all that, that chick having to work for her? You know? And, and the crazy thing is you tried to report her ass. Didn't matter. And I guarantee it was for reasons we all know darn why. But watch this. I found out when I visited recently that she had been fired soon after I left and nobody has heard from her since. What do you think, SSM? Was I correct in reporting Cassie? Yes. Yes. It was obvious that her mindless seduction attempts would eventually have led to a messy divorce and possibly the loss of an important co-worker. I'm sure it was that and also the fact that she was doing a terrible job and was hurting the company and losing money. The sad thing is, is that, you know, you, you had to deal with her bullshit and you left. But even if you didn't have her there, it sounds like you would have left anyway to go help your family, which I respect. This is oh, since you like to expose hypocritical double standards, an incident with one of Cassie's trailer trash buddies, an unattractive and, and fugly young woman would, wouldn't be amiss. Since I'm short, bald, skinny, 50 years old, and wear glasses, women have largely ignored me all my life, and occasionally I get the creepy reaction, which doesn't bother me since I've been re re resigned to being alone, <clears throat> so I keep plenty busy with historical research and try to have a very positive attitude and pull the worst dad jokes. One of the guys in housekeeping, let's call him Goofball, was a young 20s farmer, lady killer, and didn't give an F type. <clears throat> <clears throat> it was common for him to make a sexist, off-color jokes, but it didn't bother anyone since bathroom humor was common. I, on the other hand, in response to a situation, I made the comment to, to, to nobody, that's what, what she said in a very quiet voice. Cassie's friend overheard me and immediately went and complained to the director that my comment made her uncomfortable which got me a stern warning and a signature on, on company p policy paper on S-word harassment. In other words, the good-looking guy who the girls like and want to do a lot of crazy things with, he can say or do anything pretty much, doesn't matter. But when a guy who's, no offense, you said it, unattractive or unattractive to the opposite sex, he says anything and all of a sudden, you know, he's a creep, he's a pig, S-word harassment, big surprise. However, when I got back to the break room where she and the other girls were, there she was making jokes about bodily functions and laughing at the other girls' off-color jokes. To end this, I made a comment to Goofball that he needed to rescue Paul from the clutches of Cassie and hook up with her, to which he responded, I wouldn't touch that elephant with a 100-foot pole. Later on, he actually did hook up with her, and it was amusing to see how different she was with him. Thanks for all the hilarious stories. It's a shame I had to waste my entire life being the nice guy, but it is what it is. At least now the bizarre behavior women make sense to me. Drew. Well, Drew, I appreciate your story, and your story backed up, backs up what I say all the time. That's unfortunate, but you know what? You're in your 50s now. Well, you're learning something watching these shows. That is all the guys. You learn something new every day, guys. If you can go to bed a little smarter every day, then, then you've done something right. Stop being the nice guy. There you go. Don't let people walk all over you. Don't let people push you around. It was good of you to complain about her, you know, and all that. But because obviously the laws, and I'm guaranteed because she's a gal, they didn't fire her. And but obviously got so bad. And I gotta wonder if she was obviously hitting on the the boss's son. That made her eventually kicked out. I don't know. But regardless, at least justice was served. She was kicked out. But anyhow, hope you're doing well. And you know, maybe one day. If you, if you enjoyed working at Yosemite so much or the, or just simply national parks, I don't know what's going on. I mean, you said you went back to take care of your parents and your dad passed away, and I'm sorry for that. And I don't know, you know, if your mom's still with you, but maybe you go back. Because what's cool is these national parks. Like I, I talk to everybody wherever I I'm an introvert, but I still talk to people wherever I Because I'm curious. And a lot of people that work in the national parks that I've noticed, they, I've talked to them. They're in rotations where they might spend a period of time working at this park. And they go to another park for a while. And I'm not just talking about uh, rangers. I'm talking about just regular people that work at the parks, <laughs> the gift shop or whatever. And they put them up and everything, and they and they enjoy it. And these are also people that are a lot older, like 60s and 70s. They just live at different parks, and, and they have a good time. And quite frankly, given the state of the world, 
and how fucking nuts it is and everything like that. I it sounds pretty appealing to me. These beautiful wonders and being away from the cities and all that. You know, yeah, you get tourists, but still, that's something to think of. Maybe you want to go back one day and make that make that your thing. In uh, in as time goes on, something to consider. Anyway, guys, quick story, but I thought I'd be going to cover here, making the point that I do about, unfortunately, how. Well, you know, you got the point of this video. Anyway, guys, you got a great story like to share, definitely email to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just give me some time to get to it, and I definitely will. And if you have a question you want to ask me, if something's bugging you for the Ask SSM series, I haven't done that in a while, send me, send me your question, whether it's a paragraph long or a whole page, whatever, and if it's good and something I think could be helpful to the guys, I'll definitely cover it. And also, guys, definitely, if you haven't done so already, definitely subscribe to my other channels. They did what for the Crazy Red stories and SSM clips for the shorter version stories that you don't have a whole lot of time to listen to the long ones, but something short and entertaining. YouTube is not exactly promoting me much these days, as in a lot of channels like mine. So whenever you subscribe to my other channels or recommend me to your friends or family, whoever the hell would be into this stuff, definitely helps me out, and I appreciate it. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.